Well, thanks, Virosa, for this introduction. I'm very humbled to be here with you. I'd like to share my story of how I became a social entrepreneur and talk about what inclusion means for me and uh, how we can make the most out of this in an Indian context. So my life changed 13 years ago when my youngest son, Lars, was diagnosed with autism. I had no clue of what's autism, but it was, uh, it was so strange suddenly to, to have a disabled child, a child with autism spectrum disorder, because we were taken by surprise at home where he was in his comfort zone with his parents and his siblings. He was very much like his older brothers. He is a smart guy, he's trustworthy. When you make an agreement with him, he sticks to it. He was very caring to his family members. But in the kindergarten with 30 kids, high activity level, high noise level, adults who wanted him to play social games all the time, he tried to find the quiet corners. He tried to find the swing in the garden. And if he could have a swing in the garden, he could sit there for hours and be happy. But kindergartens in Denmark are not made for kids like that. Kindergartens are made in order to prepare these young kids to become good citizens in a Danish society, which is very much based on good social skills. When you start in the school, you have to enter a, a team. Everything is teamwork and group work. Higher education, if you cannot get into a team there because your social skills are not that good, you risk being a dropout. And if you make it to the labor market, and you look at the job ads, what do you see? We are seeking employees with good social skills, teamwork abilities, flexibility, empathy, good at promoting themselves, organizing their own time. People like my son would never stand more than one minute with, in a job interview with a recruiter from any company. They will never figure out how valuable he could be because he's very good with numbers, he can see patterns, he has a phen phenomenal memory and very structured way of, of working and thinking. And he comes up with a lot of good ideas of how to improve things because he finds a pride in what he's doing, not who are his friends. So after we got the diagnosis and we went through the phases that I think almost all parents went go through, like why us, why is the world so unfair? Because you feel like your dream of a perfect family suddenly vanish. I did know better at that time. I learned afterwards that no, it's not the end of something, it's the start of something new that has a depth that you won't get access to if, if you just run a mainstream life. So today I feel like a much more enriched family guy, thanks to my younger son. <clears throat> but I joined the autism organization in Denmark and got to know so many young people, mostly young men, who was just like my son, but none of them had a job where they could make use of their special skills. My background at that time was I was a technical director in the telecommunication company. I did many IT projects and I could see, my goodness, good memory, structured mind, perseverance in repetitive tasks, pattern recognition skills. Wow, I wish I had some software testers, some quality managers with those skill sets, but it's hard to find these people. In Europe, there are four million vacant jobs in IT, science, technology, engineering, math. In the US, there are three million vacant jobs. Despite a high unemployment rate, the companies can simply not find people enough to fill in these jobs. While probably 1% of any population qualify for an autism diagnosis. And among people with autism, there's 
probably an unemployment rate of 80 to 90 percent. So just imagine how many people are there out there who desperately want a job because they want to have independent lives, they want to contribute just like anyone else. At the same time, there's a big corporate sector that is screaming for talents like the ones that they could find among people with autism and many other similar disabilities. We just need to open up the eyes for the corporate sector and for all stakeholders in our community. So I came up with the idea that maybe it's not people like my son that is the problem, maybe it's our society that is creating the problems here. And I could see that society in Denmark was drifting in a more and more, you have to comply with the social requirements direction. And I said, why? Why do everyone need to fit into the same form? So I started a company called Specialistane with the purpose to create a work environment where we could train, educate, employ people, where we meet their requirements for what it takes for individuals to develop a personal comfort zone where they can do their utmost and then go out and find the tasks in the corporate sector that we can do better, not cheaper, better and claim market rates for that. That was 10 years ago and since then we have grown. We are now represented in 11 countries in Europe and North America. I moved to North America to Delaware a couple of months ago with my family to lead what will end up being 100,000 jobs in North America over the next 10 years. As Ferose said, I set the bar high. I said, if this works, we can enable 1 million jobs for people with autism and similar challenges. We're going to do it by setting up some examples, walk the talk, demonstrate in some showcases, be role models to demonstrate how can you turn a disability into a special ability. And then we want to inspire others to start up something similar. It could be in the autism space, it could also be in other areas of disability. There are so many pockets of skills and resources in the disability community. But so far it has been very hard for the corporate sector to get hold of these pockets of, of resources. Because we've been talking about integration, bringing people into the workspace, teaching these people to fit into how standards work today. That is not inclusion. I'm very happy for the theme inclusion summit here, because our model for inclusion is that the corporate sector also have to adjust to the needs of the individuals. We base our efforts on four values. Respect, expect the same from our people. Forget that they have a disorder and a disability. Expect the same. Accommodation, you have to learn together with us what does it take for the individual to excel so that we can help the company's managers to manage our people so that the company will get the most out of the resource. It's clarity. Don't use irony, don't use sarcasm. Say what you mean, mean what you say. Set expectations clearly. And accessibility, make sure that there's always someone to go to if there are questions, doubts. Respect, accommodation, clarity, accessibility. That's the management model that is needed. It's not complicated and the companies find out that their own staff also like this kind of management model. So, what can India learn from our experiences in Europe and North America? Well, we have 10 years of experience of how to bring people into training and into the workspace. But I think maybe we should turn it around and say, what can the Western world learn from India. Because in Denmark, we have a well developed so social welfare system. Um, we have lots of psychologists and psychiatrists, so we're pretty good at defining people, 
from what they're not good at. We are very good at writing long reports and documentation of disorders and disabilities. But, but in a community like in India, where there's not the same welfare system, there's not so many psychiatrists and psychologists, but the people are there, probably 1% of the population in India, it's maybe 10 million people out there who, if they meet a psychiatrist, could qualify for an autism diagnosis. We know the people on the autistic spectrum are the same in Denmark, in the US, in, in India. We know that the needs of the business sector are the same in India, in Denmark, in the US. It's the culture, it's the tradition, it's the religion, but that can be dealt with. We, we can plan that. And when there's not such a big welfare system, then we'll require the stakeholders to move closer together and find solutions together. And I think the summit here is a wonderful example of how the corporate sector, the NGOs, the autism community, the disability community, politician actually get together. And this is when we can make changes that I think when we make it work here, it will benefit the West and all over the world. It's my third time in India. I'm really getting to like it. I'm trying to look like an Indian. Um, and I see the opportunities so here. So out of one, our one million job goal, on my list at India, it says 200,000 jobs. <clears throat> So how can we do that? Well, you have to, to help us on that because you are the experts here. You know the Indian community. Um, and I think we have some real game changers here. SAP being a, a phenomenal game changer. And their commitment to this community, 1% of their global workforce, has really paved the way for discussing the same with very many other companies. And then we have to work with NGOs, with the autism community, with the education system, because that's really where we should get into. We need to make sure that it's not just the workplace where people with autism can find their comfort zone, also the education system. It's very important. So I think that we all in this together, and I think what we're doing is not because of pity for people with autism. Actually, we ask the corporate sector, the stakeholders, to help us to help themselves. Because we can give access to a huge, huge amount of untapped talents among people with autism and similar challenges. And I also learned from the TV news that there's a lack of skilled people also in India now. So let's work together, all stakeholders, let's open the eyes, let's turn th things around and say, it's not about integration, it's about inclusion, it's about learning what does it take for the individual to thrive and then adapt the workplace to fit the individual needs. So thanks for this opportunity. And um, I'm really so eager to see what we can do together. And I think Bangalore being the IT hub of the world, we couldn't find a better place to really make um, a change in the mindset of, of the stakeholders in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Tarko, for sharing your personal story and for sharing about your personal pursuit. Uh, and the vision of 2 million or 200,000 jobs is not a small one, and I wish you all the very best with that. I'd like to invite on stage Harish Handy to please felicitate Thorkel Sone.
Thank you. Tharkil, I would also request you to kindly sign the India Inclusion Summit painting that we have at the end of the stage. Thank you. No, I hope, I hope the audience realize that we have two, two legends on stage. You know, Harish Hande, Maxesi Award winner. I mean, these are two people who only speak in millions, okay? He wants to provide electricity to a million people across Karnataka. Um, that gentleman has already told his story about what he wants to achieve. Two legends on stage. Let's hear it for both of them. <laughs>